This is our final stand. We can't let them take us alive. I'm no leaving here without taking a few of them down. Who's with me? Yes. Gentlemen, no one here has to die today. Just hand over the Did he just say hand over your ding dong? Welcome back to the state of play, where it appears I've now got a massive Did he just say he's got a massive ding dong? An upgrade. A massive upgrade. Why, that makes more sense. This is the X2 S1. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking this is a large futuristic vinyl record player, but I can assure you that this is one of the best, if not the best, enclosed class 1 safety rated diode lasers on the market today. Xtool offered to send me the S1 for review after my last video where I designed and made a full set of modular terrain. I'll link that video at the end if you fancied making a full table of modular sci-fi terrain. Let's move this thing out the way so I can talk better. I know you'll probably already have seen videos covering the 40 watt version of the S1, usually shot in a huge workshop on channels that specialise in product reviews for these kinds of machines. But I don't have that setup. I just have a normal UK house with small rooms, a garage packed full of boxes filled with stuff I want to pretend I don't actually own, and two inquisitive kids who, when let loose, will break the arms off my space marines. I wanted to focus on how this works for normal workshop challenged people. So basically people with a surface to put it on, one free plug socket, and any window that opens. To make what I make, wargaming terrain, I didn't really need the 40 watt machine. I'm cutting card and thin MDF, not building a treehouse. So I asked Xtool if they'd consider sending me the 20 watt version instead. At least that way all the files I'd already made would cut with almost the same settings and wouldn't require tweaking for the extra power. Plus, the S1 allows you to swap between lasers any time if you pick up a different powered version and you can add loads of extra attachments for when I do fancy building a treehouse. More on that later. The upgrades, not the treehouse. They were also kind enough to send me the air assist and the honeycomb base plate, which I'd gotten used to on my previous laser. I'm gonna be honest right up front and say, this thing isn't cheap. It'll work out at just less than double what my previous laser cost, somewhere between 1,500 and 1,800 pounds, depending on what extras you want to add. Yeah, I know. But hear me out, the leap in what you get for your money is so vast it makes other lasers feel like using a hobby knife in the dark, whilst asleep. Whether you even consider this machine at the price is totally going to depend on what you get out of it. I design and make something almost every day, so for me, it makes sense. But consider, when you start adding air assist, honeycomb, enclosure, ventilation, safety factors to other lasers, the total price isn't that far off. This thing is like the Aston Martin of diode laser cutters, or a Borg cube. Your favorite analogy may vary. Once out of the packaging, everything is packed perfectly inside like a neat little jigsaw. Seriously, look at this. Who knew I'd get excited by how someone packed little green boxes together? Literally everything comes in its own branded box, including all the tools you'll need for the super minimal assembly. The entire assembly process is laid out in this instruction booklet, in what appears to be every language known to man. The only thing you really need to do is remove a few screws that hold in some small stop blocks and info stickers for explanation, all used to keep everything from rattling around during transportation. Then you can pull out the guide rail, connect the power and the air assist hose and drop in the laser. This laser module connects with magnets and requires two easy to fit screws and the laser's attached. This little part here is the focus needle and just magnetizes to the side of the laser. This is an incredible addition which measures the depth of the material you put in to get the laser focus just right. The only other bit of assembly you'll need to do is here at the back. This is a fan and exhaust vent for removing smoke from inside the machine. Yes, a built-in ventilation system, so no more mask wearing for me. And after the last few years, that couldn't happen quickly enough.
Open diode lasers are fantastic, but by the time you've spent money on all the added safety bits, the price isn't that far off the S1, which just has them built right in. I'd argue that one of the best things about the S1 is safety. I can now do this with my kids, because my family are desperate to have a homemade fully modular wargaming table. They are. No, really. They are. So we start by unscrewing the vent that's already on there and replace it with the supplied long tube. Now I can use this in the house rather than the garage and stick the tube out of a window. The concertina tube extends to between three and four feet, so you'll get it out of a bunch of different types of windows. Smoke safety, check. After this tube's attached, that's the S1 completely assembled. It took me less than 20 minutes. You'll notice the entire front of this thing is clear green material letting you see right in and has LED lights on the inside. This now eliminates any need for safety glasses. It filters out any harmful light coming from the laser to protect your eyes right out of the box. On whichever laser you decide to install, the 40 watt, 20 watt or the 2 watt infrared engraving laser because they're swappable. Those magnets and two screws on the laser head make it very simple to swap in an alternative laser. They even added a safety feature on this lid, so if you open the laser during cutting, it just stops. Actually, the laser just won't fire with the lid open at all. So if you have anyone who likes breaking the arms off space marines in the vicinity, if they open it unsupervised, they won't end up like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Laser safety, check. What the S1 also added were these sensors placed in key positions inside the machine and on the laser head itself, they provide enhanced flame detection sensitivity. So if anything catches fire, the machine will detect it and shut off. And if you pick up the optional fire safety set, which plugs into the S1 at the back, it can shut off and extinguish the fire automatically by flooding the inside with a non-toxic CO2 gas. I mean, that's just genius. I don't need to sit over my laser anymore and manually supervise it. I mean, I still will, obviously, for added safety, and because watching a laser cutter work is mesmerizing. Way more value for money than paying Netflix to keep cancelling shows, and a million times faster than watching a 3D print. Fire safety, check. The last three things on safety and security I wanted to mention are this big red button, this tiny USB key, and tilting. I'm sure you can guess what the big red button does. Yes, it's a self-destruct mechanism. No, it's not. That's just what I told my kids to stop them from pushing the damn thing. It's an emergency stop button. Seriously, do not tell your kids what this button is really for. Make something up. Kids see a big red button and, well, they might as well have written push me on it in a kiddie font. This tiny USB key is a security feature. The S1 simply does not operate without this thing plugged into the back. Take it out and you have a large expensive brick with an inoperable laser inside. A bit like the Death Star before it became fully operational. The S1 also shuts off the laser if it's knocked or tilted, so effectively has impact safety features also built in. All these features go together to make this a class 1 safety rated machine. Okay, that's safety covered. Right, let's have a look at the back of this thing. You've already seen the ventilation tube and over here are all the machine's connections, all in one place, labelled and super simple. This one with the image of a key is for that USB security key we saw before. It doesn't work with anything else, so don't even try. The one above is your computer connection, but it's worth noting that the S1 has Wi-Fi. I haven't set that up because I'll eventually move this to my garage due to limited space in here, and my garage annoyingly blocks all signals from anything anywhere. It's like the 1890s in there, pre-radio waves. But then we've got the power cable and the on-off switch. Over on this side we have the hose connections for the optional air assist and the fire safety CO2 kit and those can be powered and operated directly from the S1 by plugging them in here. The optional air assist or the smart air assist as Xtool calls it has five settings. One to max and auto. Most of the time I just leave it on auto as it's smart enough to detect what I'm doing and works really well but you can set it up how you want. Using the air assist helps to cut parts cleaner and with much less edge burn. But if I'm totally honest, for wargaming terrain like you and I make, I'd argue it's fantastic, but not entirely needed. It's an extra cost that makes the parts look great, 
but because we're all probably going to paint the terrain anyway and cover over any scorching, it becomes a bonus item rather than 100% essential. Personally, I highly recommend it, but you'll still be on my Christmas card list if you didn't pick it up. Flipping back around to the front, the optional honeycomb, which is optional on most laser cutters, has a working cutting area of 498mm by 319mm. To put that into perspective, it's bigger than A3 paper. Meaning if cutting terrain on A4 MDF, I can get two sheets on here at a time, or the MDF and the grey board together. While you can probably get away without the air assist, I'd really suggest you pick up the honeycomb. The S1 does come with these small rods that allow you to raise the material, but the honeycomb just creates a much more stable and better bed to place your materials. I've also found it much better at dealing with smoke and any potential fire risk due to its airflow. It also comes with these amazing little magnetic clips to hold your material in place. These magnetise down into the honeycomb lattice and have tiny little handles to grab them. So once your material is on, the clips literally magnetise it in place. I did want to mention the structure and build quality of the S1. I got used to my previous machine, which was an open frame, which moved the laser around with belts. But let's face it, this is just an incredibly sleek looking box with amazing build quality. It now looks like a product you'd be proud to own rather than a laser being slung back and forth on a square frame. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It served me very well. But this is the kind of thing that sits majestically in the corner of a room at a dinner party. The upgraded guide rail gives this thing amazing stability. The mechanics inside are chunky and top notch and lets it run it up to 600 millimeters per second. I can't say I'll ever need to do anything at this speed and it's not as fast as every laser out there, but most of the projects I create just don't need super speed anyway. You might remember from my previous laser video that it took me a while to figure out where the material was on the bed. Like, where was the laser actually pointing? I had to keep hitting the fire button at 5% power and light burn to figure out where the laser was. Well, just look at this, a crosshair. Now I know exactly where the laser is pointing at all times. So I can drag the laser to where I want and can actually see it. It's such a simple addition, but from a user standpoint, makes so much difference to setting up a job. Okay, you remember that focus needle I mentioned that magnetizes to the side of the laser? Let's watch it in action. It comes down onto the material, checks the thickness, goes off and resets itself, and then moves back over at the correct focus distance for a perfect cut or etch. Because the S1 has an automatic Z focus axis, the laser goes up as well as down. I can't help looking at what this thing does compared to what I was doing before and staring in astonishment. This focus system even allows the S1 to engrave onto curved or uneven surfaces. Now this isn't something I've been able to play with as most of the projects I work on don't really require it. I couldn't really find anything that my wife would allow me to deface to test this, so best to find a video from a creator who has a more forgiving partner. The S1 doesn't come with a camera inside as I understand some more high-end lasers do. This isn't really something that bothered me as I hadn't gotten used to a laser with a camera anyway. I was doing everything manually and had gotten pretty good and speedy doing it. But this thing comes with something else. Provided you use the Xtool software called Xtool Creative Space, which is free, it has a positioning system which I can honestly say is pure genius. It's called Twin Point Positioning. Putting this simply, you move the laser crosshair to your first point on your material, press the big button on the front of the S1, move it to the next position in the opposite corner and press the button again. In the software, it draws a box exactly where your material is and you literally drag your design inside the box. Who on earth needs a camera when you can do this? For terrain, this is great because it means you can put already cut pieces back in and etch over them with new or different markings that you might want to add. In fact, you can take existing terrain you bought and add more detail to them if you want. I do also really like the fact that when I drag the laser around, it updates in the software so I can see exactly where it's pointing at all times. Which brings me onto software, because a few of these features don't work yet with Lightburn. burn. 
Xtool Creative Space is a brilliant piece of software for working with all the features of the S1, from positioning to things like curved object engraving. But a big letdown for me is it can't open native Illustrator files. It'll open almost everything else, but not AI files. And the extra steps I need to go through are a bit of a pain. Lightburn does work with configuration files from Xtool, but you sacrifice twin point positioning, curved engraving, and a few of the minor things for now. Now, Lightburn is a pretty reactive company with great software, and as the S1 is so new, I'm hoping they update it soon. So right now, I tend to bounce between the two pieces of software depending on the job. Not ideal, but I've had to supply clients with weird and wonderful file formats over the years because they didn't know how to open a JPEG. Now, I'm not sure how relevant some of these extras are to you guys out there that want to make wargaming terrain, but I thought I'd mention them here anyway. The S1 is compatible with a few extras that you might want to consider when you win the lottery. The one I'd like, from Santa Claus, is the smoke purifier. That way I can put the S1 literally anywhere in my house and not have to worry about pollution or smells anymore. It connects to the ventilation hose at the back and purifies the smoke. I fully admit to not knowing what purified smoke actually becomes. Is it just air? Anyway, a rotary tool for engraving round or cylindrical objects. The riser base allowing you to cut and etch much thicker materials, coupled with a conveyor feeder to work on longer things that need to be fed through the S1. So that treehouse is well within capacity with this thing. If you're making wargaming terrain like me, these items aren't required, but I imagine the S1 would be great if you were setting up a laser business. All the interchangeable parts and extras make this machine perfect for that. If we're honest, if you don't plan on making a lot of things, then you don't really need any laser at any price point, let alone this laser. But if you wanted the best of the best, something incredibly safe you can use in a workshop, in your house, around kids, around pets, that does absolutely everything you might need, then the X tool is without a doubt it. I'm going to add some affiliate links into the description for the X2 S1 and a few other machines at different price points for you guys to look at. Hopefully I've managed to get this video out whilst the Black Friday event is still going on, but if not, I'm sorry. X2 do run some great deals throughout the year, so there's always another opportunity to grab one. So next time I'm going to use the S1 to design and make these. Columns, walls, platforms, doors and more that you can cut at home. I'm going to try and make them look as less like MDF as possible, as I know that puts many of you off. And then, provide all the files on my Patreon and the shop, like I did with the Eden Prime Colony. I'm also planning a modular shopping mall and some fantasy terrain in the future now that I have the S1. I know you fantasy fans are feeling a bit left out. I do play fantasy games. So, pretty much all the things I ever wanted to have but didn't buy, or that used to exist, but disappeared. Now I can make them all at home. It might be the next video or the one after that, so feel free to subscribe or join my Patreon like these fine people. And that's the state of play for today. I'll catch you next time. Is anybody else still waiting for the massive ding-dongs?